it's a birthday we're gonna party like it's a birthday well let's walk around this very busy campground it's almost stressful to be here <laughs> I mean if you have a kid like for children they have all kinds of activities and games and bike rentals but if you want peace and quiet this is not the place there's traffic there are lines at the store and, uh, and yeah it's busy very busy you're watching the rest of summer 2022 and our adventures in the South Dakota Black Hills continue. Today we're going to visit the sculpture we won't see finished in our lifetimes, Crazy Horse. We're going to visit Mount Rushmore at night. Fabulous Custer State Park. I mean, this place has everything. We'll visit Deadwood, Spearfish Canyon, and reluctantly, Wall Drugstore again before going back to Badlands National Park. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Now entering the fun zone. It is one of those RV resorts that has pretty much everything. And it is huge. Here they even have a saloon. Well, they call it a grill and tap room, but in this area, I'd rather call it a saloon. I mean, this is the wild, wild west after all, right? They have horseback riding, which is something I haven't done since I was a teenager. And there is such a beautiful setting out here. Well, the tap room is closed, so let's go into town. Hill City is just 10 minutes away. Did I mention this KUA is impeccably located? Perhaps a little on the pricey side, but hey, it is my birthday weekend and Ely just flew back from Miami, so let's have fun. Let's have a nice lunch here in Hill City. Busy little town. Let's go to the Alpine Inn. All day APA with way too much head, and I get the German Brat special. Yum! Now we can continue exploring, so after a quick nap at the campground, here we are. Crazy horse. It is impressive, even from out here. It is $30 to go in and that includes the museum, the tour, and re-entry for the laser show at night. As I said, it is striking, even in its unfinished state. Before taking the bus, let's go inside the museum because they are performing the Native American hoop dance and they only do it seasonally at certain times of the day and the museum actually seems very nice. Lots of Native American art and artifacts. Everybody. Construction on the monument began in 1948, and it is far from completion. And if they ever finish it, it will become the world's second largest statue. Crazy Horse was a Lakota war leader, and he was killed in 1877 while he was in his mid-30s. Here we stop to get a closer look and to get a lecture about the history and everything that is involved creating a statue of this magnitude. They have private tours that take you all the way to the top and we might do that someday, should be interesting. Let's 
go back to the museum so we can explore at leisure. This is what it is supposed to look like when it is finished. Oh, they still have a very long way to go. While there are no pictures of Crazy Horse, this model was created in the 1940s from word pictures given by old Indians who had known Crazy Horse. Who, when they finish it, is going to be truly magnificent. They do have a laser show at night, and we're gonna come back, but not today. Perhaps tomorrow. Right now we're going to Mount Rushmore for the evening lighting ceremony which only happens from late May through late September. I gotta say, the National Park Service could do a little better with audio, and people could be a little more respectful, but hey, it is what it is. Now they are going to show a movie, and I think after that, they light up the statue. The United States of America. It's hard to imagine but not long ago, this great land of ours was pure wilderness. Check it out, Lewis and Clark. It was an exciting time of discovery for new Americans. After they talk about each of the presidents, a little bit of the history, it is actually a very emotive ceremony. And I think now is the moment we've all been waiting for. There it is, Washington's profile. Well, good morning. Today we're going to Custer State Park, which is uh, almost, almost bucket list. They say it's uh, it's it's better than many national parks, and it is a uh, South Dakota State Park. So let's explore. Entrance to Custer State Park is $20 and it's good for up to 7 days and they also have an annual pass. This is a huge park with several loop roads and scenic drives and the first one we're going to do is the Wildlife Loop Road. I'm super excited to visit this park, I've heard so many great things. Look at that! I was hoping to see wildlife, but this is by far exceeding my wildest expectations. This has to be the largest bison herd I've ever seen since, I don't know, Lamar Valley in Yellowstone? 
and this one may be even bigger. So far, the wildlife loop has lived up to its name. Let's see what other wildlife we encounter around here. I guess patience is a virtue, huh? Really, dude? I know you have the right of way and you are a fascinating creature, but at some point, I'd like to see your other neighbors. Okay, I guess we'll just have to go around. Well, check it out, Prairie Dog Town. What have we got here? We've got burrows! These wild donkeys have earned the nickname of begging burrows because they've become famous for approaching vehicles and expecting food. They are the only animals you're allowed to feed in Custer State Park. Well, here we are hanging out in the middle of the road with all these friendly burros here. Hello there. He was following me earlier, now he lost interest somehow. Let's see if we can find another burro to talk to. Well, they really are swarming these folks, I guess they're giving them food. <laughs> Hello fella. I don't have any food, sorry. Food is that way. More wildlife at three o'clock. Is that a pronghorn? Hmm, it's coming our way. Maybe people have been feeding them. And this one is behind the fence, presumably looking for his friend. Really? I guess when you have to go, you have to go. And this is kind of sad. Like two friends, reunited, yet separated by a fence. Hmm, maybe I'm reading too much into it, more than I should. Here we have a lone bison. And what is this? Are those elk? Let me tell you, so far, 
Custer State Park has not disappointed. There you go, follow the leader. Let's stop by the Visitor Center. The Visitor Center was informative. They have a, a map there and a gentleman explaining, you know, where, where the wildlife sightings are and, and to answer questions, basically. That's why I didn't film uh, all that much. Because there were other people, you know, but it's a... Uh, it's a nice map. Now we're gonna go do the Iron Mountain. It's called uh, the Iron Mountain Road. That's what it's called. in the Black Hills National Forest. I think now's when the road gets interesting. We have some narrow tunnels coming up. Check it out, Mount Rushmore. It seems to me they could fit a few more presidents on that rock. What do you think? We have several narrow low clearance tunnels coming up, so do not attempt to do this road with an RV. Here's the first one, the Scoville Johnson Tunnel, and you can see Mount Rushmore on the other side. Let's park here real quick. I'm sure this is one of many Mount Rushmore views we're gonna have on this road. Next, we're going to stop at the Norbeck Overlook. Well, let's check out the, the scenic view here. It is, shall I say, a commanding view. <laughs> yeah, you can see Mount Rushmore from here too.
this is the one, this is the one that frames it perfectly. And we are out of the park. Now we're going to loop back and do one more scenic drive. And that is the famous Needles Highway. And then we're going to eat. And yes, we have to pass by Mount Rushmore once again. This is probably the last time though. One last time, the profile. This is it, the Needles Highway, and maybe next time we should try and stay at one of these campgrounds. Let's check out Sylvan Lake here, and it seems to be super busy, as it would be on a hot Saturday afternoon. Maybe we should come back tomorrow morning. Lots of people picnicking and swimming, tubing, kayaking, and there's a trail that we want to do that goes around the lake, so we're definitely coming back tomorrow, first thing in the morning. This is called the Needle's Eye Tunnel, and it is very, very narrow. Yeah, parking skills are very much overrated. We may actually get a better view from this one. it is, that's the tunnel from this side. Now we have a traffic jam, because people want to take pictures, you know, as you do. Why wouldn't you? And that is just a Tacoma. I'm waiting to see if a dually can make it through. Aren't this lake the most amazing pinnacles? And there are several trails in the area, but we're not gonna do them this time around. Let's go into Custer, there's a brewery in town.
here we are. It is called Mount Rushmore Brewing Company. I like this place already. Look at all the presidents looking kind of tipsy. <laughs> ah, they have the, the Pounding Fathers restaurant. Let me show you the, the graphic for that one. We decided not to eat at the brewery and instead we're going to grill some burgers. And then tonight we're going to the Crazy Horse Laser Show. This is such a huge campground, I kind of wish they would have parked us a little closer to the entrance. This is the grill provided by the campground, let's see if it's any good. I don't feel like taking out my, my Weber, so how does this work? I mean, it doesn't look like much on the outside, but I saw them clean the actual grill yesterday, so it should be good. But they should clean the outside a little bit too, I think. By the way, that pool, if it wasn't for all the kids, there's it's the madhouse, it just looks very inviting. Cheese, Gouda cheese. Soon to be melted Gouda cheese. That's it, just a little barbecue sauce from Cincinnati and I'm gonna have a plane. <laughs> well, one of the best things about this site's location, besides being a deluxe site, you know, with the grill and all that, right next to the pool that I'm not really gonna use, is we're right next to the laundry. And uh, we're doing laundry right now. And uh, let me show you something that you don't get to see uh, anymore. And I imagine because the cell uh, connectivity, cell phone connectivity is so bad here, they have to have it. We have a public phone. I mean, it's not like the ones that you put quarters on, but <laughs> there's the public phone and they have like the phone numbers for, for emergency or port patrol. I thought that was uh, peculiar. Now let's uh, go change the, the laundry from the washer to the dryer. Oh, look at that. Right. Yeah, they have activities. All kinds of activities. Perhaps not the best campground for us. I mean, these days I prefer a little more peace and quiet, but as a family vacation destination, this place might be perfect. Let's go back to Crazy Horse. Here we are, I know it's a little dark, back at Crazy Horse, uh, because they have a slideshow, slideshow, I keep saying slideshow, a laser show, at, uh, in about half an hour, we have about, it's 9 p.m. now, we have about a half an hour to kill. So we're gonna go into the museum, again, since uh, yesterday was a little rushed. But it's like a driving theater, you park here, or you, you can do it at the terrace in there too. You drive, park in here, and then you see the laser show. Should be, should be cool. Let's just walk around the museum a little bit. Since yesterday, we were kind of rushed. We didn't get to see all that much.
about to start. With legends in light. Because of the way laser interacts with the camera's shutter, and because it is pretty dim, let's be honest, video doesn't really do it justice. Anyway, my favorite part is at the end when they superimposed the finished product over the unfinished statue. And if you get to see it in person, it is totally worth it. Well, what do you know? Good morning. Early bird gets to find parking at Sylvan Lake. Check it out, Sylvan Lake. Beautiful lake. We're gonna, I don't know, should we go clockwise or counterclockwise? Let's go counterclockwise. It's a beautiful day, a little hazy. I think there's some smoke. Um, there, there may be some forest fires out west. I don't know. But this is amazing. think they left all this stuff here because they're coming back today? Let's explore this rock right here. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Let's try to go back. By the way, doesn't this diffused morning light look amazing? One shocking thing I've found in this trail is the, the amount of trash. I mean, you could, yesterday there were hundreds of people here, but you know, you see like swimming goggles discarded, you know, on a rock or towels or sandals. I mean, all kinds of things that people have left here. Maybe they intend to come back and, and use it today again. I don't know. <laughs> but what kind of person lives that amount of trash at a place? And it's just not one person, it's like, <laughs> it's scattered all over the place. Pretty shocking. Shocking too is this the sheer beauty of this place. Everywhere you look is magical. This is the reason why I love the Western United States. Nothing, nowhere comes close. Yeah, it is amazing the, the sheer beauty of Sylvan Lake here. You know, it looks, everything looks different, you know, from a different angle. So it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely a must do hike if you come to Custer State Park. And it's so far, it seems pretty easy. Although I do believe we have gone, we may have gone off trail here. Well, there you go. We have very faded blue blazes. So I guess we must uh, follow those. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, a little more primitive and hard to follow than we were expecting, but yeah, I guess it's through here because there's another blue blaze somewhere down there. Everywhere you look, it is beautiful. the heck did they bring this chair all the way here? Oh, look at that, it's a creek. It's a natural spring. Actually, it is a waterfall draining from the lake. Oh, that's very cool, that little waterfall there. Very clear water, and look at that. And all this time I thought this was a naturally occurring lake. Well, I'll be darned, there's a dam. And we made it. Oh wow, look at that view. I think it must be this way to the dam. Let's hope we don't fall in the frigid waters of Sylvan Lake. Yeah. This is it. I was gonna make a joke, but I'm not gonna. Well, this was a very rewarding hike. I mean, look back there. It's, uh, I mean, we're not done yet, but I definitely recommend it. Well, amazing, amazing hike, everywhere you look. Sylvan Lake, totally worth it. We're getting close to the parking lot now. And we are so close, that might as well do the eye of the needle one more time. Not once, but twice. Our time here at the Mount Rushmore KOA has come to an end. And we're moving to another KOA, actually, the one near Deadwood. Not because we particularly love KOAs or expensive campgrounds, but because they have one of the best online booking systems in the industry. Reserve America and Recreation.gov are also really good for state and national parks. And Camp Spot gets an honorable mention here too, because they let you choose your site on a map. Before we get to the KOA, we're going to visit a point of interest that I wanted to see when I was here in 2019, but didn't have the time.
this charming and super touristy town is called Deadwood. And we're definitely coming back later, but while we wait for our check-in time, we're going to go somewhere else. By the way, the Wild West town of Deadwood was founded in 1876, when prospectors came across a gulch full of dead trees and a creek full of gold. Within a matter of weeks, dance halls, gambling establishments, saloons and brothels were all constructed along both sides of Lower Main Street. And the rest is literally history. We're not gonna go much deeper into the history, but later today we're coming back for sure. Right now, I have that other point of interest in mind. We're entering a town called Belfouche, with trailer in tow, because that's how we roll. We're actually killing some time, as I said, waiting to check in at the Deadwood KOA. This is it. There is a tri-state museum, but I'm more interested in the monument in the back of it, which marks the center of the nation. Let's look inside the, the RV of yesteryears. Geo Center of the US. We've seen several of these geographic points in Lebanon, Kansas, in Rugby, North Dakota, and here we have the geographic center of the nation. Well, here we are. We've made it to the geographic center of the nation. Well, a couple of years ago, we were at the, at the geographic center of the lower 48, that's in Lebanon, Kansas. But this is the geographic center if you include Alaska and Hawaii. So here we are right now. In the middle of America, of the United States of America. And here's that historic cabin from 1876 the first one to be built in this vicinity. Let's go check in at the campground and then explore Deadwood and neighboring Lead as well. And here we are. We didn't know at the time, but the Winnebago Echo in front of us belongs to none other than Tanya and Dave from Turn It Up World and Let's Turn It Up World. It is a small world, after all, in YouTube land. The KOA is more or less equidistant between the towns of Leed and Deadwood, so let's check out Leed first. The town was founded also in 1876, named for the leads or loads of the deposits of valuable ores, particularly gold. Up until 2002, it was the site of the most productive gold mine in the Western Hemisphere. And the mine, well, that's pretty much all we're gonna see here today. Here's the mine on the left. Let's see if we can get at least a glimpse. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, that's a huge hole on the ground. Let me see if we can get a better view. And then we're going to Deadwood. So one mine, mine, mile trail. Part of me wants to do the whole one mile trail, but another part of me is getting hungry and thirsty and wants to get something to eat at Deadwood. Maybe not just to eat. Deadwood seems to be a fun town and much livelier than this one, at least today. Now this is as far as we're gonna go today. Yeah, let's go eat at Deadwood and then tomorrow we might do the, the, the mile trail. The one mile mine trail, that's what I meant to say.
Well, we decided to park at the garage. It's $10, but it's in the shade, and we don't have to worry about it, so. Did I hear fiesta? But we were gonna do a whiskey tasting, but we decided against it. <laughs> We're gonna go to this brewery just outside of the entertaining guest, the, the historic, you know, district here. And it's right there, I believe. What I meant to say, it is not on the main drag. Illy is having a skinny drink, and I'm having an IPA. Beer was good, now let's go back. Yeah, the Dia del Taco Festival looks a little lackluster, if you ask me. Let's go find something to eat. Beer cheese soup. That was surprisingly delicious. And the big South Dakota ribeye. And they're still going at it at the Dia del Taco Festival. We're just gonna go back to the campground and Call it a night. But before that, let's check out the Franklin Hotel here. And the casino. Casinos are not my specialty, but this one looks like um, old money. Yeah, it is an idyllic place. Well, good, um, good afternoon, that is. We've been working all morning and now we're going to Spearfish Canyon. <clears throat> it's supposed to be very good, very nice, very beautiful. First up, Bridal Veil Falls. We're entering the canyon, and the main thing to do here is to see three waterfalls and just enjoy the natural beauty of the scenic byway. And the first waterfall doesn't even require any hiking. Also, I believe the final scene from the movie Dances with Wolves was filmed somewhere around here. Here's the first waterfall, Bridal Veil Falls. And this is the one you can see right off the side of the road. Hello there, little fella. 
you know where to get how to get to uh, oops never mind bye guys let me tell you in the pictures it looked bigger Let's continue. Hmm, there's like a reservoir here on the left, so let's stop really quick. Here we have the Spearfish Canyon Lodge and this on the left, the Latch String Restaurant. And there is a sign that this parking lot is for restaurant guests only. It is odd because they even have a trail map here at the parking lot, but you can't park here. Unless you're going to the restaurant, which we might do that later. Okay, it's gotta be here. Oh, here we go. This is called uh, Rough Lock Falls and it's supposed to be an easy hike, so let's do it. Let's see what this is. Apparently, this goes towards the dam. Yes, it does. Oh, look at that. This is amazing! Now let's get back on the trail. Amazing! What a beautiful place this is! And by the way, we're having perfect hiking weather today. I don't know what the temperature is exactly because we don't really have a much of a cell phone signal here. But it's probably high 60s. It's very pleasant in the shade and the, the sun is not as strong as to, to you know, make you sweat. So this is very nice, very rewarding hike so far. We must be getting close to the waterfall. The creek. And this would be Rough Luck Falls. And here they have a footbridge. Fish and a penny. Oops. <laughs> so here we are, we made it to Rock Block Falls. So this one, now we're gonna turn the go all the way to the top.
By the way, if you don't feel like doing the whole hike, there's a parking lot and a picnic area very close to the falls. What a place, huh? It's beautiful out here. Now we're gonna do this uh, other trail. This is like a spur that connects both trails. Uh, the one we just did, and now we're gonna do spear, Spearfish uh, Falls, which is a shorter trail. It's supposed to be a little more strenuous, but we'll see. Now here's the lodge, and that's uh, that restaurant. And behind the restaurant, that's where where the trailhead is. There's supposed to be a parking lot back there too. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna go down, cross the footbridge, and then observation deck. Easy peasy. Just another walk in the woods, huh? That's pretty epic. Right, we have conquered spearship, uh, spearship, no, spearfish, <laughs> false. This is the Spearfish Canyon Lodge. Beautiful setting, let's check it out. Let's have a celebratory IPA. Yeah, I think we earned that IPA today. Now let's go eat. Surf? and turf with a view <sighs> that was fabulous this is the outside sitting area by the way that would have been uh, you know dinner with a view uh, the upper view here right behind the restaurant so we were standing down there, down there just a few minutes ago uh, look at that This is it, we're going back to the campground. Tomorrow is moving day. Well, good morning. Very cool morning here, actually. And today we're going to back to the Badlands. Check this place out. This, this KOA, very tight, actually. The sides are pretty, pretty tight. But, uh, I mean, we're here for the setting, which is beautiful, beautiful here. And um, and this, the location is so great. We're like halfway between Lead and Deadwood, and like five minutes from either. So I decided not to go to that mine after all. Let's see what they have at the store. 
for breakfast, if anything. <laughs> well, they had mini donuts and frozen pizza and, uh, you know, things like that. I think we're gonna have some breakfast here in the camper. Today, we start the long journey back east. Destination, Florida, eventually. But first, we're going to visit the Badlands, properly. Not like I did when I was solo a few days ago. And just like that, we are out of the Black Hills and on to the prairie. Oh yeah, against my better judgment, I'm going to do it. We're going to visit Wall Drug Store. I'm doing it for you, actually. Besides, I want to give it a second chance because the last time I was here, I was not feeling it. Don't you love it when passenger vehicles park in our valuable oversized parking area? I mean, there is plenty of passenger vehicle parking, but there's always someone or many people in this case, who park in the RV parking with their cars, so there's no more RV parking. <sighs> Pet peeve. Well, here it is, the famous Wall Drug Store. Since 1931, in the early days, they came up with the brilliant idea of offering free ice water to travelers crossing the hot prairie. And it was a success. Over the years, the small drugstore became the behemoth we see here today. And the Traveler's Chapel. It is nice that they have a chapel, but still. Mm, no, not my kind of place, really. Let's see the backyard. I've never been to the backyard before. Yeah, this is the backyard, the part that I forgot to I forgot to see last time. So let's check it out. I guess the appeal, in part, is this place being so large and so in the middle of nowhere at the same time. And here we have the famous jackalope. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm riding a jackalope. <laughs> yep. Yeehaw! We decided to come up to the Three Amigos Cantina for lunch. We're in the mood for Mexican today. We got burritos. All right, let's go. Ooh, South Dakota wines. Well, we came all the way to Wall, South Dakota to eat Mexican, but hey, there are no rules, right? <laughs> And now we continue towards the Badlands. But I'm going to save that for the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding in my